Okay, welcome to a funny thing called business. Four business owners with over 30 years collective experience under our belts share the capers and triumphs of running a small business and how we now avoid the perilous customer chaos and pitfalls. So this is going to be an interesting one because we are talking about homeschooling while we are in the very thick of it. So I'm Claire Worley. We also have Darren Langley, Kate Curry, Pete Morgan. Welcome. So let's dive straight in. Let's get out all our frustrations and angst about homeschooling while running our lovely businesses. So I'm going to dive straight in and ask you, uh, Kate, what's your favourite memory or experience that you've had so far in the lovely world of homeschooling oh I have so many um I think my favorite memory uh so far is uh the first week after Christmas when we were fully expecting all our little darlings to be packed off to school and then all of a sudden there was this massive U-turn and I was like, it's okay, I can deal with this. It's, you know, my children, one's in primary school, I was like, I can do primary school maths. It's not that hard. I can do and this. You. Uh, it, t- it turns out, no. Um, <laughs> the, so the, one of the first lessons, right, and I kid you not, this is what was in one of the first lessons. And, uh, and it's one of my favourite memories because it's actually quite funny looking back on it. I was having slight meltdown palpitations at the time. Right, subordinating conjunctions, relative pronouns, parentheses, and multiplying decimals. Go! <laughs> right, I can't do this. I can't do this. How on earth do I do that? And then bus stop method. We were oh, never doing yeah. stuff like this at, yep. at school. And I was like, hold on a minute. It's it's essential travel only. We we can't be going anywhere on a bus. And they're like, no, no, no. It's long division. <laughs> oh dear. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. We will look back in years to come and laugh. <laughs> yeah, I think I said that to my daughter last night. She went, no, we will not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, oh, well, I always think that you've got to try and find the humour in things. Otherwise, yeah. you probably would just crack up. Uh, so that's, uh, there you go. That's that's my little story. But we've, we've managed to find some kind of routine now, which a lot of people are telling me. They're finding routines now to help to sort of yeah. cope and manage. Uh, and I think, you know, not trying to not trying to understand all of this, you know, sometimes it, it's not the end of the world, is it? They'll be back at school no. at some point and uh, someone else can teach them subordinating conjunctions and relative pronouns because <laughs> I don't but, know what I'm doing. So, Kate, the big question is, have you learned how to do the bus stop method? Oh, no. <laughs> I tried. I got as far as the drawing, the little thing. I was like, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 I can't do this. I was on the phone to my friend who's a teacher. I was like, can you, can you do this? Can you show, can you show how to do it? Uh, that's cheating. You can't do it. You can't get teachers, <laughs> teacher friends to teach. No, we, we, we can't all have them. Brilliant. <laughs> and Darren, what about you? Your kids are a little bit younger. So um, what have you been teaching? What's been, what's been your favourite experience so far? Um, well, I mean... The, I'm kind of reminded, um, we probably all remember when um, Professor Robert Kelly was on BBC News and uh, his kids came in the background and, yes. and everyone was like, oh, that's so hilarious. Can you imagine such a thing happening? And now really, that's just a regular Tuesday morning meeting with your best client. It's <laughs> everyday occurrence. <laughs> At least 10 times. Funny how these things kind of come around, isn't it? But in terms of my favourite um, memories so far, I mean, on a serious note, I do enjoy um, seeing like the kids and what they what they get up to, and when I let them out of the cupboard, obviously, yeah, seeing what work they've been doing, and uh, and kind of seeing them them develop, and it's kind of changed the whole parents' evening uh, dynamic somewhat because you know now it's us giving a report to the teachers on on how the kids are doing, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> so it's it's slightly different, but but it's it's yeah, we'll we'll get there, and we will laugh about it one day. When we're old and grey. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> well, yeah, the grey's coming more for, yeah. for, for me. You know, there's no hairdressers now. I have to do a lot of work to cover up the greys. <laughs> so, Pete, we're all pig sick of yeah. the fact that you've got 
two dogs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we don't have to do any homeschooling the dogs. <laughs> we don't have to do any homeschooling at all. It's it's been lovely, and the dogs. To be fair, I mean, the dogs are just loving the fact that we're at home. Yeah, that's what the dogs are excited about. That we're at home and that we're there for them, and they've been walked more than ever before because they're getting like two walks a day when they might get kind of maybe one, one and a half walks a day kind of thing. So they're just, they're just loving it. And from my point of view, it's been when I've been doing calls with other people and kind of, they're kind of going, I'm really sorry. I'm homeschooling at the moment. And the voice kind of drops as though they're about to break bad news. I'm homeschooling at the moment. So we may get interrupted um at, at any moment uh, by the children and in fact i mean we did i was witness to a huge row between two, two children because um the daughter was trying to draw the arctic and the son had put a single dot of crayon but in orange and yeah. the daughter's the daughter's argument was where is their orange in the arctic and the, he had ruined this entire, entire thing. It so could been, be a penguin's beak. It seems. Yes. I said it could be a little bit of sunlight. <laughs> but it just didn't wash with her. No, no, not at all. Well, she, she, they're, they're, you don't get um, <clears throat> penguins in the Arctic, do you? They're in the Antarctic. So That's obviously fine. the kids would know that, wouldn't they? So, you know, yeah, of course. Yeah. It is ruined. You see, that's probably why I was yeah treated with such derision. But now, this is why I shouldn't be homeschooling because I'm full of wrong information. <laughs> but it's just, it's been uh, obviously it's been great for us, but it's been um, quite funny at times to see kind of the. I don't think any of us, not that we ever really kind of took teachers for granted, but I don't think we will ever take them for granted ever again. You know, we, because, you know, we, you're just dealing with however many children you've got. There, you times it by 15 or something, and that's how many they're dealing with yeah. Yeah. all at one time. Yeah. And worse, they're yeah. someone else's kids. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. With COVID, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> so always up. See, my little boy just appears in the doorway um, and he'll just, it'll just come in and start talking. In fact, Pete, I think I've been on a call with you. <laughs> yeah. And me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to surreptitiously, you know, just give him the, you know, give me a minute. Because you can't interrupt people on Zoom so easily. Um, if people are in a flow, but he'll just carry on talking. It's like he can't say, mate. He's just like, no, I'm just going to continue talking at you. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, but I remember, oh, I remember back in first lockdown <laughs> when every 10 minute break, we'd just be playing like Gruffalo um, snakes and ladders. Now we've progressed to Uno and my kids have become proper card sharks. Really? <laughs> I'm going to get them on the circuit as soon as we're back out, then. Blackjack. That's the closest to Uno, isn't it? <laughs> um, so that's every break now. Can we quickly play Uno? Um, but, you know, it, it's lovely. <laughs> there is online Uno um, that yeah. my girls have discovered on an app of theirs. Yeah, like, there's app. an app. Yeah, yeah. there's an app for everything now. Yeah. <laughs> Even break time Uno. I was I was speaking to a friend and she's only got teenagers in the house and she was saying that homeschooling with a teenager is easy because they know everything. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, Brilliant. She says, all I need to do is occasionally I just have to shout out either. I don't know what's for lunch. Can't you make a sandwich? And she says, and my favorite thing that I've shouted out over the past few months is have you looked in the ironing basket? <laughs> and she goes, and that's it. That's that's my level of homeschooling for teenagers. So, oh, brilliant! Yeah, I, I said to someone, you know, the other day, I'm kind of glad that we haven't got teenager 
teenagers and we've got smaller kids. And she said, oh, no, I'm glad we've got teenagers and not smaller kids. So everyone's just kind of... Yeah. Um, I've got one of each, so... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but the older ones do get on with it better, which is um, a relief, especially when they have to log into lessons several yeah. times a day. And, uh, and if they don't, then that. it's not me that's got to, you know, get them in trouble. It's uh, They'll get repercussions elsewhere. So. Well, that's it, isn't it? You yeah. can kind of, you know, it's their responsibility. It is, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what do you wish you had done differently, um, knowing what you know now? Would you have done anything differently at the start of lockdown? You know, all that time ago, you know, we're, we're 11 months now. So what would you have done differently, Darren? Well, I was going to go back a bit further and, and uh, into the, what I should have did, done uh, differently. And it was probably, you know, get a vasectomy or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> a good start. Um, but I guess, you know, going back to just a year ago, I've got to admit, I didn't used to like the school run. You know, taking kids to school was yeah. a pain. And I remember complaining about it a lot. But um, now I kind of, you know, treasure oh, the idea. Oh, <laughs> to the days of being able to just drop them off at school and wave them off. But, um, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think, you know, you could ever kind of plan for head to homeschool and um, run a business no well um, you, didn't, you wouldn't have believed it was possible would you I, I didn't because you know sometimes I have business owners come to me who want to set up a business you know while they've got young kids and I'm always like mm. it can't be done because <laughs> now I'm like oh yeah we can do anything now <laughs> where are your so where in relation to where your kind of business desks are, where are your children homeschooling? Is it as far away as is humanly possible? Yes. Yes. It's for me too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I've got a, a friend, Matt, who he's put his daughter's desk right next to his. Oh, what's he done that for? Homeschooling. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, because even when he said it, and like I say, we're not doing it, but I was really like, that's madness. You're going to get nothing done. Well, yeah, because it's like having your boss in the same room. You know, remember back when you had jobs, you just say to them, oh, how do you do this? That, that, yeah. That's what you do. So Exactly. Oh, and you said a couple of times, day. I've ended up doing, you know, kind of more of the homework than, than she's yeah. doing. And it's like, okay, there's, there's your problem. Mm -hmm. You know, just mm -hmm. as far away as possible. That's the way me and my wife work. We're as far away from one another, work both working from home as we possibly can be, because yeah. that's easy. Then you know, going yeah. back to what Liz was saying of can't you make a sandwich and have you looked in the ironing basket? Those are phrases that both Joe and I say to one another on a daily basis. Perfect. You know. Yeah, we're in four different parts of the house, and when like Rob's in work, but when he's like around for the kids, I just shut the door and I'm like. Don't ask me a thing. I am not here. <laughs> Kate, what would you have done differently? Anything? I don't know if there's anything I could have done differently, really. I mean, it's, it's all very well having hindsight, but even with that, like, I don't know how I could have... Um, I suppose what I would have done differently is give, cut myself a bit of slack, I suppose. Um, you mm. can't do it all. It's impossible possible to do everything so certain things have just had to take a bit of a back seat um i just didn't want to beat myself up too much because if you do really think about it you're like i'm a terrible mother i'm a terrible teacher i'm an awful wife i'm too busy to even speak to my husband and, and I'm I'm like, you know it's, i'm trying to put my all into the business as well and keep that going because that was very you know it's been a very bumpy ride the last few months as well um but I think we just all have to cut a bit of slack because everybody is, it's affected everybody to some yeah. extent, whether they're homeschooling or not. So yeah. we all understand each other's pain. And I think it's yeah. just- uh, it, I, th I think you're absolutely right with that, Kate, because I, I did the same last year. I was just like, carry on, pushing, same level. Mm. Um, and by November, I was like, ooh, can't actually think anymore. I just need to get to Christmas. There's the witch again, Pete. Yes, I was going to say. 
I think I think the witch may have to become like a regular character on the on the podcast. <laughs> and what does the witch think of this? <laughs> Who knew? Um, but I, I thought when answering this, I thought I'm kind of glad. Well, no, I'm absolutely 110% glad. I didn't know that 11 months in, we would still be going through the homeschooling yeah. because I don't think my children would still be here now if I'd have known that because it, 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 it just would have blown my tiny mind um, thinking there's just no way that I can cope. So um, it's kind of, it's, kind of like a good lesson isn't it that we can handle anything it might be blumming hard but you know we always perseverance we always find a way through yeah and we've all managed to find our monthly quiet bit of time completely uninterrupted to do our podcast I yes. can't believe yes. we've got this far and we've had no massive like meltdowns going on in the background, nothing being thrown at us. I don't know, we've done really well. There's still time. <laughs> and let's just pat ourselves on the back for a minute. We have all got businesses that are doing well. Um, so something what we've been doing is is working. So that's something to be celebrated. So, you know, you talked about cutting a bit of slack, Kate. Um, this is where as business owners, we have got to pat ourselves on the back for still being here and, and being able to smile. So in one sentence, Pete, I'm going to start with you. In okay. one sentence, share what you've learned about yourself or your business through this experience. I'm glad we didn't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yes you must be sniggering every day when you see kids appearing in the background i mean it's quite amusing from from our point of view well, of course it bloody is <laughs> you know but yeah a couple of times we've said to one another it would have been nice to be parents but quite quite glad quite glad we didn't have to kind of go through through all of this we you know that's 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 been the big thing for us um yeah oh i'm sure there's lots of other smug non-parents listening along uh kate what have you learned about yourself um it's hard to put it into one sentence but um i'm, I'm going, going to push you to all right okay uh it's i suppose reconnecting with my uh my why I suppose is what I've learned. And just to expand on that a little bit is, um, and talking about, you know, storytelling, which is what's something that we were focusing on um, earlier on today. Uh, the reason I set myself up in business right at the very beginning was to spend more time with my family and be there for my children and be able to adapt my time to be there for them. And um, despite the fact that we're all probably getting a little bit uh, sick of the sight of each other now, it still reminds me that, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to have the sort of business that means that I can be there for them. Mm. And I suppose that's that's what I've learned. Although as soon as lockdown's released, we'll probably all just go in different directions. Like, I need to just get, get away from you <laughs> just for a bit. Uh, but, you know, it's it's uh, that it's sort of just remembering that's that's why it was all that's that's why I'm here doing this now is that I wanted to be uh, able to fit my work around my family more easily so yeah very true you could be in a job having to work for somebody else yeah somebody else's roles to somebody else's time frames yeah still while homeschooling to just sit there nine to five as well making yourself available I mean I know a lot of companies are being open to yeah. flexibility but a lot, there's a lot of companies that are a bit slow to adapt and, yeah uh, and that must be very difficult yeah agreed Darren what have you learned about yourself well, it's probably more about the business side of things for me and that um clients that I've got you know they've been really understanding and I think it's kind of called back a little bit to what you're saying about you know it's, it's all kind of um seen it from each other's point of view sort of thing and I, I've had that a lot with clients where they've been they've been very patient and um you know we as I've had to, to prioritize kids over work and that sort of thing it's um mm. still worth knowing that there's still people 
at the end of the day, running businesses and, um, and you know, not, not everything can be done at once sort of thing. So I love your um, email response that you've got set up at the moment. So every time I drop down an email, it pings back. I may be homeschooling. <laughs> so <laughs> just bear with me. I think that's really great just to, you know, yeah. get people, give people the, the situation and, you know, and well, yes, and they get it, don't they? Yeah, and it's, it's the honesty of that, isn't it, as well? You can't, you know, you can't pretend that there's not stuff going on that we're all experiencing and just ignore it and say, you know, I'm planning through because, you know, people have the wrong expectations and when you can't deliver or something goes wrong, then it's, you know, setting yourself up for a fall. So, yeah. yeah. I think what I've learned is, you know, I'm a huge believer in how important mindset is. Um, but this time has definitely cemented how important your mindset is to, you know, you, you could put business in brackets, but to success. Um, but, you know, it kind of goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, us all being here. We are positive people who are focused on, you know, always doing the best we can and continuing with networking meetings and, you know, pushing forward with things in the best ways and it's really you know how you view everything and that's what gets you the good results and I noticed you know when I said about by the time I got to November when I turned into a witch uh, <laughs> by the time I got to November and you know we had a death in the family then all of a sudden I was like I can't I can't do it anymore. No. And that last kind of six weeks slog into Christmas, you know. So definitely, you know, cut some slack, give yourself the breaks you need, uh, whatever, to, to reset your mind so that you can go back in with more energy. Mm. Um, because otherwise it's kind of, it, it's pointless. Keep pushing forward. You, you don't get results and it, it's not good for you either. Yeah. Um, you've got to also, all of us, uh, but obviously the three of you who are homeschooling, uh, need to be pleased that you don't live in Wales either. Why? Because every day, but go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a very different reason. Uh, are they teaching in Welsh or something? Yeah, there's there's a lot of non Welsh speaking parents who send their children to Welsh medium schools, so they're not only having to teach their kids. They're having to do it in a language that they don't speak. Yeah. Which I, I can't even imagine. I suppose I'm doing that a little bit with our dogs. I'm trying to communicate with them. You're not barking dogs. at them. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying, but I don't think it's working. <laughs> oh, dear. So what's the biggest challenge that you've got right now, guys? Pete, what's your biggest challenge? Uh, I think the biggest challenge, obviously, it isn't homeschool related, but it's kind of within that that area, is just finding time when people are free because they've really mm. reduced their hours. And there's so many businesses that are like, okay, I'm doing mornings, my wife's doing afternoons, um, you know, and uh, and we don't do we do nothing on a Friday and a Wednesday because that's when we try and take the kids out and we go somewhere. Um, and that's been, and I don't, I, I never complain about it. I never, you know, it is just like a, okay, this wouldn't have happened in 2019. Yes, that's true. You know, it would have been. So that's, that's kind of been the biggest challenge for me is just learning to be kind of really understanding. It's not that I'm not, but I, you yeah, know, just no, to be more get... understanding and, and patient that people have to do, this kind of thing yeah you're seeing you're seeing our side yeah absolutely you know i can't I'm, like i say it's our dogs are happy whether we're walking them through the snow at 6 30 yeah. in the morning or 11 o'clock at night yeah uh, they don't say when we walk we say when we go for yeah. a walk you know um. so darren what's your biggest challenge uh sanity trying to keep hold of it um <laughs> No, I mean, it is just kind of balancing the time is the, is the biggest challenge, you know, between uh, myself and my wife, you know, it's like we both have to work, we both have to try to be in the homeschooling and the older of my two kids is able to do quite a lot of it, 
herself, but you have a six-year-old who's not, you know, he's not going to be able to get on and be stay motivated and doing it. And so it's um, it's just it's just doing that really, planning the time, working out at what point we do the art classes, which is basically when they have to draw daddy sleeping or <laughs> do the science class, which is basically introducing them to, you know, how washing up liquid to get gets daddy sleep to sleep. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and their PE lessons when they have to carry the bin bags out to the bin, that kind of stuff, you know, yeah. sort of working out the timetable. Yeah, it's all that's the tricky part for me. The sanity was at the top of my list, uh, the biggest challenge. Mm. Um, and I, I think, you know, we've all noticed some changes in the last kind of like, I'd say even like week or two weeks when people really seem to have reached their point of, come on now when's this <laughs> gonna end and that happened for my daughter last night she just had a complete uh, she was gone the, <laughs> you know the line was a dot to her she'd just gone so far past it um so we had to make an emergency call to her best friend who's been in our bubble can we go for a night walk at you know seven o'clock and that kind of fixed her again um, but yeah, sanity is uh, taking it day by day. Kate, what's your biggest challenge? Uh, I think really the same lines, really. Uh, what you said about mindset really resonated. It's been um, some mornings I wake up and I'm like, I'm a tiger. I've got this. And then some mornings I wake up and I'm like, I can't cope anymore. And it's just trying to find somewhere between the two. So I'm not like manic and I'm not like rocking in a corner, just trying to yeah. keep some middle ground where I can feel relatively in control of what's happening. Um, it's hard, uh, but I do find things like networking groups, connecting with people, ringing people up that you've not spoken to for a while. And just uh, that just helps to relieve that pressure a bit and helps you to feel a bit more connected um but also boredom i'm 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 bored i'm just put it out there yeah. it's boring at the moment I'm, I'm not really living life at the minute uh, other than just sort of working and making lunch and then clearing it away and then yeah. some more and then making dinner and clearing yeah. it away anyone else like... sick of uh, loading and unloading the dishwasher yeah oh and I loved my dishwasher when we first got it. I thought it was my best friend and I loved it. And it used to make me go tingly every time I opened it. I'm like, oh, everything's so shiny. And now I'm just like, oh, that's my nemesis. <laughs> Could we just apologise to whoever is Kate's best friend? <laughs> there was a time you were you were replaced by the dishwasher. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, so let's let's finish on a uh, positive note. Let's talk about the silver linings. So what are the silver linings when it comes to, you know, homeschooling and this time, Pete? I think it's the potential for kind of self-learning as well. So I've been um, kind of speaking, I've, I've connected more with my niece through lockdown and the homeschooling because believe it or not and listen no one is more shocked than me i'm seen as the clever one in the family <laughs> Brilliant. pity the rest of them they're you know they're just kind of fire is new to them okay so pete what's your what's your forte it, it's it's kind of technology because she's um kind of learning about drama and she's starting her own so she's 13 now. She's starting her own YouTube channel and it's been kind of helping her through that and talking about equipment and talking about how you, you know, hold yourself in front of a camera and how you deliver what you got to say and how to make things interesting. So and through that, when she's kind of asked different questions. So she was asking a question about she wants to do some cooking stuff and she's really getting into cooking and baking and um, how does she deal with a, you know particular aspects of it? And I had to go away and research that and speak to a couple of people I know. And that's what I mean about, so I've learned quite a bit um, by teaching her. And, and, you know, I know what Kate was saying about maths earlier on. Surely some of it's stayed in. Some, you know, you've mm. retained some of the knowledge that you've, no, <laughs> not at all, no. <laughs> 
Well, that's that's for me. That's been the 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 thing. I, I'm the silver lining is a better connection with with kind of the younger members. So kind of my younger brother and sister, and um, uh, who were both of school age, and my niece. Uh, and I've learned stuff as well. So. Yeah, that sounds lovely, and I bet lots of people will be able to relate to that too. So, Darren, um, what are the silver linings for you not having that vasectomy all those years ago? <laughs> Well, I suppose. Um, uh, let me think. Let me think on that one. I'm going to come back to it. No, the silver lining has to be the the fact that we've got this extra time to spend with with them. You know what I mean? It's lose so much of our kind of lives to work and school and you know, our regular working or regular week time. They're just getting time to spend with them and actually see what they get up to when they're learning and how they're progressing. It's kind of a unique insight really into their education which you don't normally get and previous generations if they are teachers perhaps don't get to uh, to really to see that so yeah definitely i think there are definitely some silver linings yeah i think mine um has kind of come to light just in the last few days uh because it's my birthday today and we started the kind of celebrations um you know birthday weekend isabella's made me 45 because that's how old I am. 45 different pictures, cards, riddles, posters. Um, and, you know, James has just loads of stuff. Oh, you know, I've got some balloons here with 45 on. Haven't they got uh, schoolwork to do? Say again. Haven't they got schoolwork to do? Well, yeah, but they just love crafting. Um, so that's been really lovely, um, which they wouldn't have had the time to do before. You know, there's been so many walks and lots of chatting, lots of good conversations. But I think the real silver linings are yet to come. I think we, well, I feel personally that there's going to be lots of appreciation after all of this for the kids. My daughter yesterday was ex wanted to put her school uniform back on. That's how desperate she is to get back to school. Me and Rob's like, but you can wear it if you want upstairs. Um, so I think there's going to be lots of appreciation, which is is going to be lovely because, um, well, no no parent ever said, oh, the kids were really appreciative of that holiday, and they're just not, are they? So fingers crossed. Kate, what are your silver linings? Well, I wrote down appreciation as well. Yeah. and uh, one of the things that we've been doing a bit more as a family is just looking back at some of the things that we've really enjoyed doing together some amazing holidays and things like that and um and we appreciated them at the time but even more now yeah. now that we can't actually go out and do anything like that um i think that's so important on every level i'm gonna i'm really looking forward to just going for a, a coffee with a client and just having a proper a proper meeting um yeah. i mean i think i think we are going to rebuild differently off the back of this and um and one thing I was doing before is just rushing around like a mad thing all the time and yeah. burning myself out um before I'd even got to my desk at nine o'clock in the morning I was absolutely shattered um and I just think there's, there's better and cleverer ways of working um so that's my other silver lining is I think that we're all more accustomed to zoom calls as well which will probably continue and save all that driving a hundred mile round trip to have a client meeting and that kind of thing that massively done on zoom so there's a lot of positives i think that will come out of it i think we'll rebuild a better world it's gonna be almost like a big reset yeah absolutely agree with that i think um you know rob's got some clients who work in corporate organizations and you know, they've shared that, you know, the meetings, the in-person meetings are going to stop and, you know, to a degree. So I think we have to change something because we know our, um, our planet is in trouble. So I think there has to be major changes. Um, but guys, I've loved this conversation because um, homeschooling conversations normally are just, ah, they're full of fraught and anxiety and this has been really positive um so hopefully we're giving people uh lots to think about and, and think about all the positives around the homeschooling because there are lots um 
So thanks for uh, sharing. I'm just so, going to go and let the kids out the cupboard for their lunch. Yes, now. yeah, <laughs> let them out, let them out for lunch. So um, please share, subscribe and review so our fellow business owners uh, can enjoy, be inspired and always keep focused on the fun side of business too. Oh, I felt like Jerry Springer then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we should have thrown some chairs around. <laughs> Just take care of yourselves yeah, and each other. Each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. Did it in. 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 Cool. That's fine. Is that going to be in the podcast as well? No. <laughs> gonna... I'll keep it. I'm going to keep it as a. I'll keep it as a thing of this is how. This is how we make sure we're all in sync on the sound. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs>